Okay, the purpose of this video is to provide a history of the uh, program and bring us up to date where we are at right now. In 1986, the program was passed, SB or AB 2020. In uh, 2007, October 1st, the program started back then. It was the blind leading the blind, who certainly recycling. All this was new. Uh, distributors, grocers, uh, even uh, department staff. They were all new. They came from different agencies into a brand new division, and that was incorporated into the Department of Conservation, which had never handled anything like this in the past. Then, by around 1991, uh, Chuck Calderon introduced a couple of bills to address problems within the program. One was the Convenience Zone Study Bill. We should go back and review that today. The other one was a bill to uh, ensure competence within the program. And so auditors were required to be real auditors and uh, follow the Yellow Book, which is Government Audit Standards and investigations would be subcontracted out to the Department of Justice, not handled by the division at all. The uh, department opposed that, so it didn't pass. Had it passed, I think we wouldn't be where we're at today. Now we fast forward, AB 3056 opened the floodgates and started pouring out money, and it was a significant change to the handling fee mechanism, taking off the uh, cap of $2,300 a month, and allowing it to rise exponentially. Uh, recyclers uh, were getting checks of 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars from what I understand. Uh, certainly it wasn't needed. Too much money was left in the fund. It was rated. In uh, 2008 we had the financial difficulties. 2009 we go into proportional reductions. The fund was caught short. In 2010 Cal Recycle initiated a surveillance program uh, for the Reno area. Uh, it published a report in June or July and showed uh, over 200 vehicles that they had surveilled coming into California. The report identified the, uh, uh, the owners of the vehicles, their driver's license, their addresses, uh, vehicle license, it had everything. And not once did the department ever tell a recycler not to buy this, inf this material. It was that perspective on holding recyclers respons responsible for something they couldn't be held responsible for. That is the problem. It is why the fund has been drained. That and the fact that they didn't think they could audit uh, things like curbside programs. Uh, Anybody getting CRV can be audited. In, uh, later in 2010, uh, the first auditor's report came out in November, and it described ineffective management had hindered the program, and they can't uh, do statistical forecasting very well. This is it. Deficiencies in forecast and effective management have hindered beverage container recycling program. That was in 2010. Not until 2012 did we have any change in management within that program, and that's when Deputy Director Ortiz was appointed. This was the first only real management change since 2010, and uh, the Deputy Director came in with a few biases, which uh, actually were contrary to uh, uh, regulation and the Administrative P Procedures Act. Uh, he came in with pay and chase, which created a significant expansion, expansion of the denial of due process and uh, denial of, of uh, offering hearings. Then he also came in with another one, uh, level the playing field. Uh, that prompted him to uh, sign a memorandum of understanding with the U.S. Department of Labor. For that, they fingered uh, recyclers who might be in violation of uh, uh, payroll tax law, and uh, when USDOL went in, they would ask uh, questions of recycler staff, uh, which were intimidating and invasive, uh, looking to get them to finger the bosses. Uh, in 2013, <clears throat> we had our first budget bill, SB 96, that made significant changes to the program. It uh, forced uh, the industry to use Doris. It uh, came up with a 
an ineffective training program. Uh, they delayed the application process, created a longer application process, and uh, ended commingled. That hurt a lot of the uh, glass recycling programs, especially in places like uh, San Francisco where uh, hospitality uh, industry was uh, significantly hurt by an inability to move glass. They technically eliminated uh, the reverse vending machine that Replanet used from being used at all because it eliminated commingled. The machine cannot detect CRV, therefore it must be paid based on a commingled basis. Now if recyclers aren't supposed to buy commingled and a reverse vending machine is a recycler, then why did they get to perm why were they permitted to continue? Uh, in conjunction with those statutory changes, there were necessary regulatory changes. The original statute has a provision that it shouldn't have anymore. No sunset was ever put on the adoption of emergency regulations. So the department can adopt emergency regulations anytime it wants and never have to move to permanent rulemaking to allow the industry to comment and to challenge uh, onerous uh, proposed regulations, or in this case they're already adopted, uh, things that lack clarity. Uh, there's a lot of problems with what they put into emergency regulation. And I have petitioned, they still have not moved to adopt those permanently. Um, 2014, SB 861, another budget bill. This took the uh, statute of limitations from 250% uh, uh, increase and uh, wasn't needed but it, will, it is a, uh, a hammer that uh, the department uses over the industry. Uh, in November of 2014, a second audit was published. In that audit, the auditor found uh, that the program was continually running deficits. Uh, the legislature was given warning. Uh, they failed to properly respond to fraud. They can't identify targets and proper, pro identify targets properly and they don't know how to measure effectiveness. Uh, all pretty damning issues. In 2015 and 16, uh, DOR operates to close recyclers, to uh, delay applications far beyond what they were permitted statutorily, and um, to deny payments and uh, fine people for anything they could. Uh, 2016, we saw hundreds of recycling centers close, uh, most of those by Replanet, uh, but the uh, scrap values on the industry have had its toll, and uh, a number of independents have also closed. Uh, we also saw an accusation against the largest uh, waste hauler in the country for uh, about $4 million for bringing in out-of-state material and claiming CRV on it. And then... That brings us up to uh, today. I can tell you what I think is needed. Uh, this program hasn't had any oversight hearings uh, since Byron Shear left the Assembly. It's time for both the Senate and the Assembly to hold oversight hearings to let them hear from the public and those afflict, affected what's really going on. So far, all they've done is listen to the department and take their recommendations and stick them in budget bills which have no transparency, no opportunity to participate on the part of the industry. And then we need another audit. We need to audit the areas that are most effective and that have not been looked at. That means enforcement. We need to look at the policies and procedures that enforcement has used because they've been ineffective. Then we need to um, review certification. They gave themselves an extension on how long to certify recyclers, and they took far longer than that, in violation of statute. And then I highly recommend that they uh, uh, audit Doris. I think you're going to find another state computer boondoggle, and you'll notice uh, the auditor will find how the department has used uh, tools uh, like an ability to profile Latino recyclers and people who've been in the business. Uh, this is not what this, this program should be used for. It should be used to help recyclers 
and not artificially target them. And uh, I've dealt with this in hearings, and their data, it's not validated, okay? They can't validate it. So it's just innuendo, suspicion, and they are making decisions to deny recyclers certification based on this. So get a new, uh, a new audit. That will give us a better insight as to the failures of the program and what really needs to be fixed and then open it up to oversight hearings. This program can be saved and it should be saved and we need to serve the public. In uh, one recent court decision, a uh, Sacramento judge stated that the department had not protected the public in the management of this fund. That's where we start. That's my recommendation. More to follow. Thank you.